Hello. Right, just pulled up at the petrol station to get some diesel. I thought I'd do sort of a transparency video. How much you earn for a particular day's work or whatever it is. Now, it is half 20, 25 to 6 on a Saturday night and I'm going to work. How much do you think I'm getting? On another note, I've just seen, well, I swear I've just seen, Bill Bailey, the comedian, on a motorbike and sidecar, has just driven past me on my way to the petrol station. Now, if Bill Bailey then goes on to make something, I don't know, a show about traveling the country in a sidecar and motorbike, I've just seen them making it. Anyway, see you in a bit. What I am going to say though, the, I am going to tell you the amount I'm getting paid, but the amount I'm getting paid, or the amount I've requested to be paid, is there's a reason. Because it's Saturday night, it's going to impact my, it's impacted my Saturday anyway, because I can't go anywhere with the wife for a meal or anything like that. It's going to impact Sunday with the kids, because I'll be asleep most of the day, because I'm old now and I can't recover quickly. So what you, all, all this is for really, really, is valuing your time, right? How much is your time actually worth against being at work? Now, I told the people involved, and they'll verify this, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do the job. I don't want to be working on Saturday night. But I said a throwaway figure, well, it wasn't a throwaway figure, it was a calculated figure, but... I said a figure, thinking that nobody, they just go, no, 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 it's to, we'll, we'll organise a different day, which I wouldn't have minded. But no, they agreed. So, we're going to do it. We're on our way to do it. So I'll show you the job, and halfway through the video, I shall let you know how much it, uh, a Saturday night for me is worth. All right? Come with me. Let's have a look at it. Right. So I've arrived on the job. To drive down, I don't know, two and a half hours, something like that. Um, on the way down, I was listening to uh, Insight, the strip, strip Back podcast for trades. Um, I've been, the reason I've mentioned that is a segue into it. I have been invited on the podcast to have a chit chat about basically big cables that nobody really wants to deal with. So if you've sort of wondering about if you've got any questions you need some answers get on it have a listen to it because it is pretty informative i've just like i said i've listened to two episodes on the way down i'll probably listen to another two episodes on the way back very well put together by two lads two irish kids very knowledgeable by the way so it's a bit some of it was a bit over my head because i'm just a, a big cable wrangler I don't really need to get into the intricacies of some things that some people might need to get into. And if you're worried about it, they're the perfect people to um, to ask. Follow them on Instagram and you can DM them, no problem. You can say, if you've got queries, bang a question into them and they are very knowledgeable. Anyway, that said, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Right then, I don't think you can see it on the floor. There's a cable there. What I need to do is turn it so it doesn't, doesn't roll on itself when I actually um, start putting it in in a hole. I'll show you the hole in a minute into, inside the building. I'm going to move the cable now. Has to go with it. There we are. So the reason 
I moved the cables from where they were to where they are now is this so excuse that light they drop down from the roof down this riser the there's supposed to be some rack installed but due to an accident the rack hasn't been installed um, the accident was nothing to do out here by the way it was the person that was involved anyway I'll move my hand out the way so the camera focuses you see the little the little box over the top that's getting took away and those cables now bend in the correct the correct way so we can just lift them up and their loop will follow themselves up 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 and up and then in if they were coming the way that they were laid like this and we just pick the nose up and put it in then you get a twist in the cable so we couldn't afford that so I've just twisted them plus the five core what 95 mils so we've got 400 amp buzz bar section um, and what we're going to do is this effectively it's just a joint box it's a big JB because we've got two four, five core 95s to come into it but we've got four single core HO7 cables and stuffing glands coming out of the other side so this is this is the unbox it's not it's not a ASMR unboxing unfortunately it's a get the thing out and get involved in the ceiling unboxing so that's what we're gonna do quite heavy as well so there we go, it's an Eaton Rifles one as well. We have got a glam plate at both ends and actually all the sides are removable as well so that might be that might come in handy later on right i'm going to open it up and let's have a look I'll do it the old-fashioned way because i've left my impact driver in the van idiot I'm not used to this. Screwdrivers. Got it? Three. Right then, so this is a little mock-up of how we propose to do it. There's a, a threaded bar, let me see. There we go, in this one. See the plate, the square, the rectangular plate that's threaded. You've got two eight mil, well, 13 mil bolts with an eight mil. 8mm thread on them, they go through attached to the bottom, now what we're going to have is the HO7 singles coming in this end, so that's why the distance is a lot shorter than this distance here, is I can bring them straight in and straight on. The other ones are 5 cores, so I need to have as much room as I can to be able to bend them to wherever I need them. So basically, they're going to come across, bump, 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 one each, one for each side. Those bars are going to get shortened to allow me to get the cable in through the gland and to spread the cores to where I need to get them spread. Uh, I'm going to mark those now, unbolt everything, and then once we come back, once they come back and they're cut to size, we can install them and we can see where we're going to go. We can get things fitted. And then we can get some, maybe we'll get some holes. Oh no, the holes, look at that. Wonderful, the holes are already in. So we need to attach some unistruts onto those. And then hopefully we're good to go. So I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna mark those up now. that so that gives us a cut I don't really need to measure it I'm not taking anything off this side because I can get the cable in and onto the connection with enough room so we're okay we're good to go in that respect right then what we've got so far we had some temporary 
generator cables into that Glasgow switch. We've disconnected those, pulled them round over that 45 unistrut and then out. And what there is up there is our access point to the outside. So our cables will be coming in, they'll be coming underneath those two pipes running across there. And then I've got, we've got to set them up, up to the ceiling and then bend them so that they'll come in like this, up and then bend flat. Our box is getting mounted just yonder of that conduit. It's picking my hand up, which is a pain. So it's just on the far side of the conduit from where I am now. And I'll show you what's happened with the box. The pad was, they were running the full length. The bars are running the full length of the box. I've, we've cut those down. I didn't bother cutting that side down because they're over and above. Look at that, that's getting on my nerves, that. Over, they're over the side, the height of the bars, so the cables will come in no problem. The two 50 mils are in yon end, and then we've had to drill two 32 mil holes because we're mounting that earth bar on the outside, and with these two cables being five cores, we need two holes, we need two apertures to get out with the internal earth onto the buzz bar, which is sort of if you can envisage it, it's going to be mounted here inside the ceiling up there and it is now about half ten Saturday night so everybody's going to be boogieing a right old drink and a good old laugh I'm stuck in a hospital in Ilford putting cables away, good heavens this is what you do now Getting onto that, I did say at the start of the video about the time and your your time that you have off, your leisure time, time with family and whatever else. So how do you price this job? Now I don't know what if you said anything in your own mind or you're actually commented, I don't know. But I like I said at the start, I didn't want to do the job, I wasn't interested. I'd done it on a Wednesday night, that'll be fine, Thursday night. But it was stipulated that we had to do it on a Saturday because of the schedule that the hospital's got. And they're, they're the gaffers at the end of the day, so you've got to go by what they want. Um, so I just said, £1,000, 990 quid. If you want me to come and do it, that's what I want. Um, am I justified in saying that? It's up to you. So you, you decide that. For me personally, that's my time to deal with the family. We couldn't do anything after a certain time. So we couldn't, let's say we were going to go around a friend's house or me and the wife were going to go for a meal or we were going to go out for a beer or whatever it was. We couldn't do that. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sleeping most of the day. So that's my, more or less all of my day, taken up with me sleeping, recovering from tonight's ordeal. And then Monday, I'm going to be tired on Monday, and you know, so you've got, you've got to incorporate for me. You've got to incorporate that the whole thing into the price that you put in. It's not just the hours that you're at work; it's the disruption of your leisure time, family time, and how much you think that's worth to you. I suppose what I'm getting at is, don't be pressured into doing something because your boss says. Ah, nah, 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 nah. That's what you, that's what he thinks it's worth. Sorry about that. So yeah, what all I was saying was, you know, it's your time. It's not their time. It's your leisure time. You don't have to do it. You can do it if you want to do it, if you need the money or if, don't be pressured by your boss saying, you owe me or this is what we have to do. You should be loyal to this company. No, first and foremost, you're loyal to your family friends and yourself right because you only get one trip round you don't get to go again so and that there was a saying said to me a couple of couple of months ago the only people who remember the time that you actually worked over the extra time you spent at work are your kids and your family your gaffer won't he won't he won't care it'll be your family that remember the time that you weren't with them so just bear that in mind Right, so the next step is I've got the, the, the ones coming from that way. 
to take the cords coming from that way. So I'll show you what we've got. We've got the plate and a two two tapped holes, 13 mil bolt, marries up with that. It's as simple as that as the mounting stage goes. Um, what I'm hoping is I've got this right because I don't particularly want the gap. Let's see. San Miguel at you going, mate. Eh? <laughs> I'll get them tightened up later. So we've got four of those to put across. The 150 HO7 single is going to come in this end and it's not going to be long. I'll show you where the. Uh, there we go. So I want to mount that underneath, and if you can see, that's about, we're going to need to about to actually measure it. It's going to be about 100 mil to the front of the lug as it comes in through the stuffing gland and in there. So it's not, they're not going to be that long, but the reason I've done it like that is because the two cables in here with the main five cords have got to come in spread, go all over the bloody place and connect one on top, one on the bottom. I might have to move these little bolts, spacer bars, a little bit further back. Because I don't want the cable I don't obviously don't want the cable touching touching those. I think I'll do that now. So there we go. They're all mounted, glands are in for a measure, I've got the 32 mils to take the earth from the 5 core out onto the earth bar which is over there, and then this, very short distance, about 100 mil, but we're okay, we're, we're all good, that's for the 150 HO7s, so we're going to try and get this lifted in now and hopefully I can show you the, uh, the performance that takes place. Here we go yeah, then, yeah, getting the, the box up into the ceiling. Now, fortunate, we were very, very fortunate with this ceiling because the whole ceiling, although it looks like, although it is a full ceiling, it's made out of Unistrut. The whole ceiling is, the grid's made out of Unistrut. So we were able to lift the box up, rest it on top while we got ourselves in position and then we could lift it in. We, you could also use the Unistrut as a brace like with your arms you know you could rest it on your arms so it was a really it was a really good ceiling that we were fortunate enough fortunate enough to work with um it did take a while to get it, the uh, the bolts in line and and whatever else but we got there in the end it was quite heavy it was heavy to have an arm's length type of thing but it needed to be robust and heavy to take those sorts of cables um i just had a little bit of a a bit of a movement to try and get the 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 bolts lined up here as i take over just climb up tap 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 tip 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 and then i got the bolt in i got the zeb turned and, and we're ready to go so yeah we can go with the cable installation Now then, get the cables in now. There we go, cables are installed. So, you saw me putting the, uh, the box in. I'm just getting the lads to do me a piece of Unistrut. Then I'm going to mount to the ceiling up there somewhere. I'm not going to point because it keeps focusing on my fingers. Up there, just above those cables. And then I can tie the little ratchet winch on and pull them up into there. So that gets me the set. 
on them and then I can get them straightened out to go into the glands so there's no stress on the glands it's all held on the unistrut up there so that's the next step then I'll be glanding them and then I've got to take them back out through the hole outside I think I can't remember what the termination is it's less than I think it's less than a meter inside but I do need to take in a certain amount to come out of the two see the two um, stuffing glands because there's a that's where we're going to mount in that space there we're going to mount our earth bar so they need to go onto the earth bar but yeah oh god still plenty to do Okay, cokey got the glands I don't know whether you can see the glands the glands are on both glands are on this one is a really terribly made cable so I've had to strip that before we actually put it in because I wouldn't have been able to do it up there. It's really badly made. It's like, like this. Here, this, this is the in. It is solid. So what I've had to do, I've had to heat it up with a heat gun to get the knife through it and then to be able to prise it off to make it pliable. It is, whoever made it, want the legs lashing. Anyway, yeah, that's the next step. Pull them back out of the hole that we made in the wall and then pull them back in together hopefully into the holes and then I'll just I'll bring them over that bar there and let them sit and then I can uh, get some terminations done one on the front one on the back but we'll get to that in a minute okie dokie termination time I'm going to show this termination of the neutral in its entirety and then what I've done later on is I've sped up the uh, the rest of the termination of the first cable. The reason I've done this is just so you can see how long I actually had my arms in this position. Now, terminating cables of this size really isn't a bad, uh, it's, an, it's not an arduous task, but having your arms above your head for this amount of time, which I think the first one before I edited it down was 17 minutes. So although they're not constantly above, as you can see there, they are the majority of the time up in the air. And it's not a natural position for your arms to be. Believe me, my shoulders are paying for it this morning. Um, so yeah, it's it, measuring the I've just cut it there. So I've measured it, I've cut it ready for the lug. I mounted the lug onto the, onto the bar, onto the clamp took the measurement and now I'll be stripping it, stripping the end, ready to go inside the lug. The heat shrink that we were given was a lot smaller than necessary. It did go on, but it only went on if, you, if we put like a little bit of lubricant on the heat shrink and slid it over the lug. So that, again, that was time. It was just a little bit more time that my arms were in that position. The whole job was, <clears throat> it was a frustrating job to do because of the position, but it was a task. It was a real thinker of a task. You know, you, you were thinking, right, well, if this happens here, that happens there. It, it was challenging. And I like a challenge. Um, and I enjoy it. The the fact it was coupled with at this time, I'm gonna guess it was around about three. Was it? No, it would have been about half four in the morning. Doing this, four to half four in the morning, and I'd been awake since about nine o'clock the, the previous morning. So. I think all told, I was awake for just over, well, around about 24 hours by the time I got to bed this morning. But this is what I was speaking about at the start of the video, about how you value your time. I wasn't trying to show off. I wasn't trying to, you know, say I was better than anybody else. It was just, I thought I'd do a transparency video to show people. Now here's the rest of it sped up, so I shall leave you um, to watch it if you wish. It's basically the same thing over and over again. 
But I shall uh, get back to you in real time shortly. Right, I'm going to, I've finished now, I'm going to manually zoom in, i.e. climb up the steps. So that's it. I don't think, I mean, I think the, that grade's a little bit overshot, but I was doing it upside down, my neck has gone funny, so I don't think that's too bad. I'm quite happy with that. So I've got the HO7 150s to come out the other end, out that side, and then they're going to bend round and go onto this wall here, through, up oh, under there through there, across, and see that trunking in the corner there? That's going to come down that trunking into that Glasgow switch over there. Right, that's it done. I don't know whether you can see it there to focus a little bit. The lads are just tightening top, getting the torque settings and stuff. So that's the earth done. The switch is done in there. Obviously, cables have landed through and in. There's the 150 HO7s with the slot cut in for the eddy currents before anybody says anything. No, oh, you haven't done that, and you'll get a so it's there, it's in, it's done. Um, then it look like I'm going on holiday, nice sunny day. Anyway, that's that done. Look at the state of me, I need to go and get a wash, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to drive home now and I'm going to listen to. Inside uh, the Strip Back podcast. Always on. If, no, no, I want to listen to the podcast on the way home. So I suggest if you want any sort of information Excellent. about uh, what's it called, electrical installations, give them a listen because they are pretty good and pretty knowledgeable if you're struggling. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. A little thumbs up. I'll see you in a bit. Jesus. That was a an evening, and I'm about to say my shoulders are absolutely killing me. Been like that all night, arms in the air. Anyway, got it done, got it sorted, and now people can have CT scans or MRI scans or whatever they need because of us we are the champions of the world thanks to max from falzon electric thanks to adam from volt amp um great great bunch of lads to work with really really spot on and um as much as i'm not enjoying it now I really enjoyed that last night. That was a real big challenge and it was good. It was a good uh, task, task to complete. So I shall leave you now. Thank you very much for watching, if you got this far. 
and I'm going to relax for most of the day. The missus has just started doing the roast dinner, so basically I'm going to have Sunday roast dinner for breakfast. But thank you very much. Little thumbs up. See you later. Cheers. Bye-bye.